movie. Uh, I did all of martial arts with the character Donatello. Uh, any Donatello fans out there? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Pat Johnson, the uh, stunt coordinator. Uh, well, I'll tell you a funny story about it. Yeah. Anyways, Pat Johnson, he had known me since I was, I don't know, eight years old doing martial arts, demonstrations, competing, that kind of stuff. And uh, Golden Harvest was the production company for uh, the Ninja Turtle movies. They were also the company that produced all the early Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li movies. Uh, and they were, they, you know, they were actually my favorite martial arts movie company. Uh, so when I got the call that one of the uh, Hong Kong stuntmen had hurt his back in pre-production, and they were looking for somebody, I was like, yeah, Golden Harvest, Jim Henson. I mean, just that alone was like Jim Henson and the guys who make Bruce Lee movies. Uh, yeah, that sounds super cool. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I worked on the first movie, did all the martial arts, and then uh, I was taken out of the costume in, in the second movie to play Kino. So, uh, yeah, the short version of it all. Okay, so that's kind of a recap of yesterday. Yep, those of y'all that are here. Um, that answered all of my questions. So, if it's alright with you, I'm opening up the floor. Sure. Anybody have a question? <laughs> Hi. Hi. I would like to know how was it to work on the second Turtles movie? Yeah, it was uh, it was awesome. I mean, you know, the first you know I we, the first movie was a lot of hard work. I mean, there's no getting around. On a typical movie day, you're shooting like minimally 12 hours. Maybe 14 hours. That means you're doing fight scenes like pretty much all day long in a costume, in the heat, in the sun. Like it's a lot of hard work. I mean, there are pictures of us behind the scenes with like our heads off, and it's like, I mean, it looked like we, you know, I've been dragged through the mud. But so when they, you know, told me that I was going to play it, you know, a regular character in the second movie, I was like, yeah, that's a lot cooler. You know, and I'd go tease my friends who now were in the classroom, like, hey, how you guys doing in there? Is it hot? You know. Well, I gotta say, you did a great job. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. How old are you yeah. when you uh, played Kino? When I played Kino? Yeah, uh, so when we filmed the first movie, uh, it was actually in between the, my, when I was doing all the martial arts for Donatello, it was in the summer between my junior and senior year in high school. And then uh, when I, we did Kino, I had just graduated high school. It was like the summer, I was like, yeah, okay, good, now I'm gonna go off and make this super cool movie. See you guys later! And uh, so yeah, I was about 18 years old. I remember you when you were a little kid. Of course, I knew you had, um, yes, sir. Uh, I was martial arts for 50 years, but I remember seeing you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, you know, I, I got into the entertainment business because, you know, I grew up in martial arts. My father was my instructor. Uh, he had a very famous martial arts demonstration team. We used to compete and travel all across the country. And, um, and that's how I got into movies, you know, because at that time period too, late 70s, um, around that, you know, Bruce Lee had just passed away, but still everybody like looked up to Bruce Lee. I mean, every, you know, as a kid, all, that's all I want to do is just be like Bruce Lee. Like, that was it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to train every day, you know, and eventually I want to make movies and that kind of stuff, like Bruce Lee. And uh, so I was fortunate enough to have a dad who, you know, helped me in my martial arts and supported me getting into acting and stuff. But uh, I was doing a martial arts demonstration in Las Vegas, and the lady who eventually became my manager, you know, went up to my dad after the demonstration. We did a demonstration, the crowd went crazy, and this lady comes up to my dad and is like, Does he speak English? 
had my little bowl haircut, you know, Bruce Lee. Yeah, he speaks English. Ernie, get over here. And, uh, you know, I introduced myself. We were just competing in martial arts, so we didn't really, like, making a move, you know, you have to come to Los Angeles. Like, well, we don't really, we, we live in San Jose, California, and we're doing martial arts, we're traveling, like, we really can't do that right now. And then, like, cut to, like, four or five years later, we had done the tournament thing and traveled, and, and so, uh, we were like, you know, maybe it was time to get into movies, you know? So, uh, my dad found the car five years later of the lady and called her back up and was like, hey, you know, we're kind of done competing now. Uh, maybe it's time for us to try to give that, you know, entertainment thing a, 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 shot, a, a shot. And the lady was like over the phone, she's like, yeah, well, but has he grown any, you know? And my dad's like, no. Nope. <laughs> I was pretty much the same size, like five years later. That I was when I was like eight years old. It's like now it was like 12, but I was pretty much exactly the same size. Anyway, she ended up becoming my manager and uh, and was really instrumental. Without her, I would have nothing would have ever happened. I would have just been a dream. But she really, I was the one who facilitated me getting into business. So, so, uh, I owe a lot to her. All right, well, I'll see you guys later. Nobody has any other questions. No. <laughs> how, how is it working on, and do you have any funny stories? Where is this coming from? from? Right here. I'm like, where are I hear voices. <laughs> how is it working on, and do you have any funny stories from working on Surf Ninjas? Uh, surf Ninjas, yes. So Surf Ninjas, you know, after New Line Cinema was the one who uh, distributed uh, Ninja Turtles, and after the second movie, you know, I was starring in it, and it was very, you know, hugely successful. That Monday, they were like, yeah, we want to do movies with Ernie, and so they brought, you know, me in, and they were like, yeah, we want to do movies, and they were, were trying to, like, figure out, like, well, what is that? Like, they were like, well, we got to pair you up, you know, maybe it's, like, you and the whole Kogan, and like, okay, and I'm like, or are you and Jackie Chan, and Jackie Chan had not done any movies here, and so, actually, the writer Dan Gordon, who wrote Sidekicks, uh, came in and he pitched a couple of stories. And uh, what eventually became Surf Ninjas with, I think, like Surf Ninjas, Surf Warriors of the South China Sea. And, you know, that was an, actually the original title that before it became Surf Ninjas. And, uh, yeah, and so uh, I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, Surf Ninjas. So, um, yeah, so it was kind of cool, but you know, the thing that was, it was, the hard part about Surf Ninjas for me, like on a production level, was just, like, we were trying to do this movie, and it's like the first chance that I was like, gonna get to star in the movie, and there was a producer on it, but I was also like a 19 year old kid, like, you know? So, um, you know, we didn't really have a lot of time. Honestly, like, we, we shot the whole movie in like five weeks which included like filming in Thailand. So it's like going to Thailand, coming back to Thailand, and then shooting the rest in like Santa Monica and Venice. Um, but funny stories, I mean, I don't know, it's just, uh, yeah, that movie was, I, I mean, uh, it, it, here, here was the thing, is like when that movie came out, we did like test screenings of surfing. So Ninja Turtles 2 comes out and like, I don't know, it was pretty quick, like two years later we were like, had Surf Ninjas done and we were like in the movie theaters. And we were testing the movie, which I don't know, you guys are all familiar with testing, they like basically show a movie and then like ask questions after, if you like it, and you rate it, excellent, great, good, whatever, fair, of course, sucks. And so, Surfers and the crowd, you know, the audience is like, they were full theaters and everybody was going crazy in the movie theaters. Like, the kids were going like wild. The kids were loving it. The, the, the test uh, scores for Surf Ninjas were actually higher than Ninja Turtles because New Line had done Ninja Turtles. So the test scores on like Ninja, Surf Ninjas were just through the roof. We thought it was going to be a huge hit. And uh, when it came out, there's like nobody showed up in the theater. It was like literally like 
just nobody came. It was like, you know, all right, well, I guess. And then so on Monday, the Monday of, <coughs> of uh, so it's the Sunday, so Break the Movie opens on a Friday. And then like on Monday, you know, all the trade papers like Hollywood Reporter, Variety, like they show the box office and like, you know, that kind of stuff. And it was like front page, it was like, Surf Ninjas wipes out. Alright, well, I guess I won't be working for another ten years. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that was kind of a rough thing, but you know what's funny is, is that twenty-five years later or whatever. A handful of Comic Cons that I have gone to, one for one, like people love Surf Ninjas. Anybody love Surf Ninjas out there in the crowd? Oh. I like it. Uh, yeah, so it's become, uh, you know, a, a cult classic that's like loved by the people who love Surf Ninjas. So that's super cool. And, uh, and I'm super stoked about that. Yeah. Everybody likes Surf Ninjas. Seriously, like all the Comic Cons that I go to, like, it's all about Surf Ninjas. We were like, yeah, 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 I know Ninja Turtles, but Surf Ninjas. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not a surf, dude. I'm trying to get in. Somebody, like, I've been on Twitter here and there, and uh, people are like, trying to, they're like, Surf Ninjas too. you guys gotta make it happen. And, like, Rob Schneider, and Tom Logue, and like, Kelly Hugh has gone on to do lots of stuff. So. I was like, yeah, that would be kind of cool, 25 years later, you know, I wonder what would be going on, but I'm sure there'd be a lot of fun stories that we could do, but, um, now, Surf Ninjas was, you know, one of the things that people may or may not know, my dad plays Zatch, the guy with the one-eyed patch, the one-eyed patch, uh, he plays, you know, I got to star in a movie with my dad, so that was, like, super cool, I mean, that was, like, you know, when we were, when I was growing up, we were making like eight millimeter movies together. So to like star in a, you know, big studio movie and get to, you know, try to put together fight scenes together and stuff, it was really kind of like a highlight for me right now. Uh, so, I grew up obviously, Secret of the Ooze was like my favorite movie. It still is, it's in my repeats. Know, one of my basic ones, but if it wasn't for you and all the turtles, like I wouldn't have gotten my interest in martial arts. So thank you for that. Um, but in saying that, another one of my repeat movies that I watch very often is Pool Hall Junkies. All right. And uh, my question is, how how awesome was it filming that? And more importantly, do you know how to hustle? Yeah, right. So I don't know. Does anybody know Pool Hall Junkies out there? A handful of people. That's good. That's like. Now we're going deep into the Ernie Reyes Jr. Library. Um, Pool Hall Junkies is, yeah, awesome. Um, and for my character, just to give, give some of the people backstory who haven't seen the movies, you know, my parents save up their entire lives working super hard uh, for me to go to college, and I take the money that they uh, saved up their entire lives to go to college with, and, and uh, go spend it gambling in the pool hall. Um, so it was really cool. Um, you know, Mars Callahan, who was the writer, director, and star of that movie, I had known since I was a kid. And so when he asked me to be part of it, I was like super stoked. And it was an amazing cast, like Christopher Walken, and Chaz Palminteri, and Rod Steiger, his last movie, like legendary actor. Ricky Schroeder and all kinds of crazy people. But like, I'm a huge Christopher Walken fan too, so I was like, oh man, Christopher Walken's in this movie. You know, and uh, it was funny because uh, we were in the makeup chair, and I'm sitting down, and I'm looking you know, in the mirror, and the lady's like doing makeup or whatever, and Christopher Walken is sitting next to me, you know, in the chair, getting his hair and makeup. Done, and I'm like just looking, and I'm not saying anything like, you know, the guy's like a legendary actor and I'm not going to bug him or anything, I'm just going to sit here and kind of just stare at him, stare at him. I'm like looking there and yeah, he looks over at me and he's like, yeah, so I was watching Jerry Springer last night and, and he goes on to this whole story. I, I'm horrible at a Christopher Walken impersonation, as you can just tell. Um, but it was super cool because, you know, I don't know how many years later it was, 
I ended up uh, working with him again on the rundown. So I have two movies that I got to uh, be in with Christopher Walken, which was kind of like a huge puppy this thing. Um, but yeah, pool junkies was awesome, you know. I shot some pool, like just, you know, in the day, you know, hanging out in, in the 90s, just like playing pool here and there. And actually, Mars and I used to go to a place called Hollywood Billiards in Hollywood, and that's kind of where he and I played pool a little bit. Uh, I, don't know, I wouldn't say I can, can hustle anybody, but I'm good for a game or two, so. Eight or nine balls. Yeah, uh, either or is good. Um, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, and we had all these pros and people that I didn't even know, but like, you know, helping us set up some of the trick shots they were making in that movie. And yeah, it was it was awesome. We, uh, I was I was actually, you know, it was actually the, one of the first movies that I ever got to do where I wasn't doing martial arts in it. So that was like super cool for me. I'm like, you know, I don't have to go to a fight scene. You're like, no, we're just gonna go over here to the bar and hang out and play pool. I'm like. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Pool Hall Junkies is one of my, my uh, personal favorites.